in this video, we're going to start talking about oceans. The first topic we're going to cover, and this will be the only one covered in this video, is that the ocean is stratified. So we're going to look at layers that form within the ocean and how those layers form. Big concepts, this covers all of the videos you're going to watch. Um, much like climate on land, the ocean ecosystem is influenced by differential warming and the Coriolis effect. So thinking about how the ocean moves around and how it functions, all of that is going to be strongly influenced by where the sun is hitting the earth most directly and how those fluid currents, both wind and water, are moving around differently based on that spin um, and changes in the currents. Uh, next big concept, the ocean food web depends on transportation and mixing of nutrients, and that's fueled by changes in density. The Earth's oceans mitigate changes in climate via the ability to resist changes in temperature by circulating water and by absorbing CO2 from the atmosphere. And then this last one, the ocean is the world's largest biome and it's home to many different diverse ecosystems. And so the different uh, videos in this lecture series will cover each of these big topics. So ocean stratification, uh, the ocean is separated into distinct layers and we can look at those based on um, their salt content and also on their temperature. So warm water, you have water particles moving around more quickly. That's what warmth is, is just faster movement of molecules. And so if they move around more quickly, they're farther apart from each other and that makes them less dense. As they cool down and slow down, they get closer together. So colder water has more molecules of water per unit volume, so it's more dense. So warm water will rise to the top and cold water sinks to the bottom. So we get stratification in that way. If water gets really cold, cold enough to freeze, then weirdly, because most things, their solid state is more dense than their liquid state, water's different. When water freezes, it makes a crystalline structure and those molecules spread out and um, form this nice kind of crystalline lattice work, but they're farther apart than they are in the cold water. So ice is actually less dense than either warm water or cold water. So it floats on the top. So we can look at that again, our warmer um, waters on the top, our colder waters on the bottom, and then thinking about how the salinity matters, that's the salt content. Um, so if you add more salt, you're adding more molecules per unit volume. So the more salt you add, the more dense that water gets. So cold, salty water sinks to the bottom, warm, fresh water sits on the top. So those two regions are kept separate by this um, kind of imaginary line that we draw called the Pycnocline. And there's um, this very... Uh, shallow area where you get a drastic change in both temperature and salinity. This graph in the lower right hand corner shows the um, change in density of the water as you move deeper. So the higher you are, the less dense it is. And then we get this really steep change in density here right at the pycnocline. Um, and so that's this really shallow transitional zone where as you move downward, it gets incredibly more dense and then it kind of levels off and it doesn't get much more dense after that. So the pycnocline has two big contributions to it. It has the temperature contribution and it has the salinity contribution. And so those both kind of happen in the same um, region of the, the water column is you get a big change in temperature and that's your thermocline here. And you get a big change in salinity and that's your halocline. You put those together, and that's the pycnocline. So you should watch this video separately because I can't play it in here, um, but I have the link on the side and I'll link it in the comments. Um, but he does a great job of showing how and why um, those two water columns separate. And it's pretty cool to see where the um, pycnocline sort of forms. So a third major change between these different layers is access to sunlight. So the topmost layer, the euphotic zone, is where sunlight can penetrate through the water column. As sun moves through um, molecules of water, it bounces off them and a lot of it is gonna get deflected or absorbed. Um, and so eventually that sunlight isn't going to penetrate into the water column. 
So the top layer, you get sunlight. That means you can have photosynthesis. You can have photosynthetic organisms. You can get the accumulation of biomass and add to your food web. As you move deeper, you're not going to have that base of the food chain that is kind of self-reproducing anymore. Um, you're going to have to either have things that are moving up into that euphotic zone or um, somehow adding more food to your food web there. And then down in the midnight zone, um, the aphotic zone, you have no sunlight at all. So um, there's a lot of different ways that that food web can exist. Um, and we'll talk about hydrothermal vents and sort of how they make their own little food web. But overall, those three major differences, the difference in temperature, the difference in salinity, and the difference in sunlight availability make incredibly different sort of stratified biomes within your ocean layers.